Okay, uh, let's look at the exam 3a, problem number 3. Right? So we have uh, f of x, uh, which is x times c to the x, uh, part a. We want to find a derivative. Right? So let's find a derivative. Right? f prime of x is equal to, right? so this is a two things multiplied together. So we're going to use a product rule to take the derivative. Uh, derivative of x is 1 times the second, which is e to the x, plus first guy is x. Derivative of e to the x is uh, e to the x again, all right? So which means that, uh, let's see, e to the x and e to the x is in common. So e to the x and uh, e to the x. So we can factor it out. So you have uh, e to the x here, all right? Then what's left uh, is 1 from here, 1 plus, right, here's x here, so that's x, right? So that's the first derivative, f prime of x, right? Then we want to find a critical value, so we set that equal to 0, right? You can see that the x, uh, e to the x is never 0. In fact, it's actually positive. So this guy is never 0. All right. So we know that the only way we can make a 0 that is that the 1 plus x equal to 0. All right. So which means that uh, you can just uh, subtract, subtract 1 from both sides you get the x has to be negative 1, right? So this is the critical number right here. Yeah, so maybe I should say critical number, right? Right? So let's do part b, right? We have to take another derivative. So f double prime of x is equal to, right, derivative of the first, uh, it's going to be 1 times the second e to the x plus first guy is 1 plus x times the derivative of the second guy is e to the x again, right? So this is going to be, right, again, e to the x is in common in both terms. So you have e to the x out here, right? What's left is you have a 1 and another 1, so it's 2, okay? Then plus x, right? So this is the second derivative, uh, f double prime of x, right? Then we look for the inflection point. So uh, we set that equal to uh, 0. Right, so you can see that uh, again, at e to the x is never zero. Right, so we can set the two plus x equal to zero. Then we can subtract two from both sides of the equation to get uh, x equals negative two. Right, so this is the x coordinate of a possible inflection point. So we have to make sure that the there is a concavity change there. All right, so let's do a number line. All right, so here's x. All right, x is negative 2. So negative 2 is there. All right, then we're looking at the second derivative. All right, so uh, if you try something smaller than negative 2, like 0, and oh, actually it's negative 2, so I have to try negative 3. All right, so if you put negative 3 here, so that's going to be negative. And then that's positive, so it's going to be negative here, right? Which means that the original function would be concave downward there before negative 2. After negative 2, we can try x equals 0. And if you plug in 0, it's 2 positive. Exponential function is positive, so you have a positive here. Which means that the original function is concave upward. Right, so there's a concavity change at uh, negative 2, so we know that uh, there's an uh, inflection point there. Right, 
So we need to find a corresponding y value. So x is negative 2. So plug negative 2 into the original function. Right? So you have, uh, let's see, it's a negative 2 times e to the negative 2, which is just a negative 2 over e squared. Right? So therefore, we can find, we found the inflection point. So inflection point would be, right, it's negative 2, comma, negative 2 over e squared, right? So that's the inflection point, right? All right, let's do part C, right? So, um, uh, complete the sign uh, below using B and C. Actually, this is A and B. Sorry about that. So this is A and B. To find the interval in which where is decreasing and the concave up. Right? So let's do that. First, uh, we have to do a uh, number line. Let's see. Uh, from the first derivative, uh, we know that the critical number is negative 1. So we can see that the critical number, uh, first derivative is 0. All right, let's do a little number line here. Uh, so number line, uh, maybe up here. So number line there. All right, so uh, critical number is negative 1. All right, then first derivative, so f prime. All right, try something smaller than negative 1. So like negative 2. So if you're applying negative 2 here, that's negative. So it's negative here. All right. So we know that the original function is decreasing there, uh, decreasing, right? After negative 1, like uh, 0, then uh, you can see that the first derivative is positive. So original function is increasing there, right? So uh, it's a before negative 1, so uh, first derivative is negative. So it's a negative sign should be here, and a negative sign should be there. Right. After negative 1, it's positive, so it's increasing, so it's positive there. All right, so we did the number line for the second derivative. So before negative 2, it's negative, so it's negative here. After negative 2, it's positive, so it's going to be positive here and a positive there. All right, then it says that, that we want to find an interval where uh, f is decreasing, so it has to be negative and a concave up, and the second derivative positive. So we are talking about uh, this guy right here. All right, so, uh, so therefore the interval we're looking for is negative 2, comma, negative 1. All right, so that's the interval where f is decreasing and concave up. All right. So uh, we want to uh, use this information, and uh, we already got some points, and uh, we want to sketch the graph, right? Just to follow the uh, pattern here. So we it's also said that it gives you a horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, which is the x-axis. So it's going to go kind of like this, right? All right, before negative 2. So right here is negative 2, right? It's decreasing and the concave down. So you're going to have a graph which looks like this, right? So it's decreasing concave down, right? Actually, I'm going to just re redraw that. So this is a little small, but let's see, it's going to look kind of like this, right? Uh, I don't like that. All right, let's do it one more time, right? So y, right, horizontal asymptote there. All right, so this is going to go kind of like this, getting closer and closer to the x-axis. All right, then after that, it's still decreasing but concave up. So it's going to still decreasing in the concave up. So it's going to look like that. And after that, increasing then in the concave up. So it's going to look, go like this. All right. All right, so this is more or less the graph, and uh, you have a horizontal asymptote here. It's decreasing and concave down. This is decreasing and concave up, and this is increasing and concave up. So it's going to go through here. It kind of missed it here. So here, 
and that will be the inflection point there. That's the uh, x-intercept and y-intercept. All right, that's it. I hope that uh, this was clear.